Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another episode of The Fat Show. This episode I'm gonna be titling Everything Fluids. Uh, I'm going to change the engine oil in my 100 series Land Cruiser. I'm gonna change the transfer case and rear differential fluid. And also I have a power steering line that's leaking, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain the power steering system, replace that line, and fill it up with fresh fluid. Uh, if you watched my previous videos, I've already done the front diff fluid when I did my everything front differential video. And I think I'm going to do the transmission fluid at a later date uh, when I have enough time to allow the new gasket to cure. Um, fortunately, I'm going away for the holidays, so I don't really have time to deal with that right now. So I'll do that on a separate video. But with that, it's gonna be uh, pretty simple work, just nuts and bolts and filling. And uh, yeah, let's get her done. All right, you've seen me do this before. Um, gonna do, put some liquid molly engine flush in, and then the procedure for this is just starting it up and letting it idle for exactly 10 minutes. Um, obviously, nothing above idle. Um, and then drain the oil out immediately following. This is the first car I've ever owned where the oil can be drained without having to lift it up. I have to admit there's something oddly satisfying about that. The drain plug bolt is a 14 millimeter. I installed a new drain plug and crush washer and the torque spec is 20 foot pounds. I still have my skid plate off currently. Um, obviously, if your skid plate's on, you're gonna have to go through the trap door to get to this. Just was wishful thinking that someone would have put this on with the correct amount of torque. Actually kind of a cool design that it has this little spout here so it doesn't get all over the frame rail. I mean it still is a little bit, but and then we'll lubricate the gasket. I always just put these on hand tight. <sighs> I filled my truck with six liters of Liquid Molly 5W30 and one 500 milliliter bottle of Ceratec additive and my level ended up being exactly spot on. I was perfectly in the middle on the first try. I don't think I've ever done that before. All right, so here's the drain, here's the fill plug on the transfer case. Obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the fill plug first. <clears throat> And 
and there's a crush washer on here, just so you're aware. Also, of course, I forgot to order a new one, so I'm gonna be trying my luck with uh, reusing them. If it starts to leak, I'll order new ones. All right, I should be able to get both of these in the pan at the same time. Not the worst I've ever seen, but it looks like this has definitely been in here for a while, so it will probably appreciate a change. All right, so don't do what I did, folks, and reuse the crush washer. And we're gonna torque this to 27 foot pounds. I'm like the last person that worked on this car here. Must have been like the Hulk with how he torqued everything. Oh, I am so happy that I'm not gonna have to pump this in. It is so annoying having to use those fluid transfer pumps. They just make such a mess. And my new Liquid Molly 7590 going in. This should take, I think it's just over three liters. Spare you guys from watching all this, but I'll put the exact spec in. I think it, I remember it's just over three liters and this is just going to be time consuming getting this all in, obviously filling it until it spills over. Despite not having the fluid transfer pump, I'm uh, still making a mess. Or despite not having to use the fluid transfer pump, I'm still making a mess. And it definitely didn't take three liters. I was like, 1.75 probably is what I put in there, but you never get it all out as much as you think you do. If you really wanted, you could drag the front of the car up to try and drain more, but for me, I just say change it more frequently, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, now I'm gonna clean off the fill plug. I'll put this back in. If at first you don't succeed, get get a bigger hammer or get more leverage. Of course. Again, not the freshest I've ever seen, but I've also seen a lot worse. All right, so watching this diff drain was like watching paint dry. Well, that's good enough. This time I actually have a new plug and new washer. And same as the transfer case, you're just gonna fill through the fill plug until it spills out. Um, I think this is the same, just over three liters, or about three liters. I have like a million and a half empty bottles of this in my fluids cabinet, so I'm just gonna use a bunch of those. And this one has a leak. But again, I'm not gonna make you watch all this. Pretty self-explanatory. 
It is uh, it's so nice having a setup where you don't have to use the pump. I wish Liquid Molly would start making like the packets of gear oil like Amsoil and Valvoline has. Doesn't help that this e-brake cable is like directly in your way. So my plan for replacing this power steering line, this suction line is the one that's leaking. I'm going to siphon as much as I can out of the reservoir. Then I'll try and unhook this top hose and route it down to the bucket down below to minimize the amount of power steering that I spill all over the place. So this is my rig for siphoning it out, just using my syringe, tie-on tubing, and then just putting in a waste bottle. Right now that the reservoir is empty, it might be hard to see, but I have my green bucket down below and I'm just gonna remove the suction line here and then just move that hose over and route it down to that bucket. That will become the lowest point in the system and hopefully drain out the rest of the fluid so I can go ahead and remove this suction hose. All right, so for the lower connection on the power steering pump, I used the hose clamp like the last person did, just cause it's too hard to get down there with the pliers you need for the ear nose clamps, which is what I used for up here. Um, I just like these better than hose clamps. Supposedly they're supposed to apply like a more even force around it. I put two on there because why not? Uh, so yeah, ear nose clamps here. That's got a new hose clamp on it. Um, yeah. Obviously it's pretty difficult to get down there. So that's why I did that. And now we'll go ahead and fill it up and check for leaks. So I just, uh, I filled the reservoir up pretty high and then I just pumped the key just till the car turned over and then it actually killed itself because I forgot to plug the mass airflow sensor back in. Um, but anyways, yeah, you, obviously you're gonna be filling the system and getting air out, so you want it kind of high um, just to account for how much it's gonna drop. So now I guess I'll go ahead, plug this back in before I forget and then know how that's routed and then I'll uh, check the level top it off and then I'll do that a few times and then I'll start turning the rack back and forth and then just try and get all the air out and get the level dialed in so that's a wrap on this episode I think I'll uh, celebrate with the water of beers <sighs> Miller High Life is the champagne of beers and Mick Ultra is the water of beers but anyways I, I feel like I accomplished a lot today I know it's just fluids but hopefully it will help my truck uh, feel a lot better about itself going forward. Um, they weren't the worst uh, gear rolls I've ever seen, but they definitely needed to be done. Uh, so got that transfer case done, the rear end done, uh, did the engine oil change, the windshield wipers, and I got that power steering hose replaced. Fingers crossed that won't leak. The old one was definitely weeping quite a bit. Uh, so I guess I flushed the power steering fluid too a little bit. I'm not sure. I drained the entire system, but I got probably like, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a liter out. So that's probably a pretty easy way if you want to uh, try and change out some of your power steering fluid uh, without, you know, getting too far into, you know, taking off the high pressure lines from the rack or anything. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, I guess I'm going to take a break for the holidays and take a break for a parts hold. And then come the new year, we'll hit the ground running trying to bulletproof this thing, and then eventually down the road, work on the uh, overlanding build of it. All right, see you guys next time.